What do Falcons do? Rise up. Welcome to Rise Up Reactions, the show where we talk all things Falcons, NFL, Georgia sports, and in general, the sports news of the day. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning, lifelong sports fan. And guys, we are officially in the offseason. Um, I made a video this past week, earlier in the week, just saying how much I appreciate everybody watching. I did promise that I was going to be coming out with another video talking about offensive players that I think we could look to in free agency. And again, videos are probably going to come in a little bit fewer and far between until there's some major news happening. Um, one of the big pieces of news that did happen, Derek Carr is officially not going to be traded and did get cut uh, by the Las Vegas Raiders. So he is now probably the most attractive free agent quarterback right alongside somebody like Jimmy Garoppolo. And could either of those guys find their way onto the Falcons? I think right now at this very moment, both of them are an upgrade over Desmond Ritter in terms of just their skill and what they would bring to the table. I don't know that they are worth the money. And again, Lamar Jackson, we still don't know what's going to happen with him. I do look for him to get a franchise tag, and I don't personally feel like we need to make a trade for him. I think that would be a bad plan overall. But again, I've talked about some uh, some defensive free agents we should be looking at. I'm going to talk about a few offensive today. Um, let's start with our offensive line. The biggest part of our line that struggled this past year was left guard because we basically had a rotating door with three different guys playing, including Matt Hennessy at one point, moving from center over to guard just to see how he did. Ended up getting hurt in that, uh, at that position. We really didn't get to evaluate him there. Uh, not sure that he will continue to serve that role. They might move him back to center because Drew Dahlman certainly didn't look all that great from time to time and seemed like he was in over his head a little bit. So let's talk about the left guard specifically. There's only three guys here that I think make any sense at all for the Falcons. And they all have their pluses. They all have their minuses. Uh, one would be West uh, West Schweitzer, Schweitzer. Sorry, I can't say his name. West Schweitzer, who is a former Falcon, so a lot of you will know his name. He's going to be a free agent coming out of the Washington uh, Commies franchise. Um, he is only going to be 30 years old. He seems like one of the more solid prospects. Didn't like that we let him go a few years ago, but. Definitely somebody that could come in, already is familiar with Atlanta, familiar with the culture, and might be a good fit for Arthur Smith, though he certainly didn't really play with him in the past. Then another guy, Isaac Samalo, Philadelphia. He is probably my absolute favorite choice. Um, he is probably not going to get re-signed by the Eagles. They are just one of the teams that's in a really bad cap situation. They're actually negative by about, I think, $15 million based on what the cap is going to be next year. And that's before they re-sign any of the players that are leaving. So I think he's going to be a casualty of this team that went all in for a Super Bowl. And he's going to be looking for a new home. Certainly somebody that we should consider. Um, probably going to have to pay him somewhere around $10 million a year or so. He's going to be 30 years old by midseason. So still a relatively young guy in, the, in what I would call the prime of his career. Um, a guy that we could pay for three to four years to stay on our team, similar to Wes. Um, another 30-year-old. The only guy that I think might be better than both of them, it just really depends on if we want to go with an older guy or not. Justin Pugh is going to be 30 year, uh, 33 years old at the start of the 2023 season. He is probably only going to be about worth $6 million a year, so it's a little bit cheaper, but it doesn't bring a veteran presence. Uh, didn't look particularly great at Arizona this past year, but he has a legacy dating back through his time in the NFL that does... Uh, suggest that he may still have a little bit left in the tank. So somebody that I think we need to look at. Um, I'm kind of hoping that we build up late in the draft, though, maybe in the fifth round or so for a guard. And who knows? We'll see what happens with the combine. We might end up getting some surprises where guys move up the board. It's a little bit light on guard for the draft this year, just going through several mock drafts, seeing what we have available to pick. And obviously, mock drafts are not the whole story. They're not the be-all, end-all. But... They do give you an idea of who is currently available when based on kind of consensus of everybody that's doing it. Certainly, I feel like after you get past the first two to three rounds, things just get crazy. The NFL, uh, the NFL scouting departments, that's where they really shine. That's where you make or break your draft is in those middle and end rounds. Uh, before that, I think a lot of people have a pretty decent idea of what kind of talent looks like. But anyways, moving on, center is another position. I've already hinted at that Drew Dahlman was not the answer. Matt Hennessy hasn't been the answer. We really haven't had um, an answer since Alex Mack uh, back a few years ago when we were a Super Bowl caliber team. 
Um, so centers that are going to be available. The my absolute favorite though would be a bit possibly available. I do look for him to possibly retire though. Jason Kelsey. Uh, he is going to be late 35, almost 36 by the start of the 2023 season. He has spent his entire career with Philadelphia. I think he wants to finish his career as an Eagle, so I don't really look for us to be able to sign him. But as of right now, he's one of the free agents that they're going to have to figure out how to sign. If we did get him, he's probably going to cost us $10 plus million a year, probably for one or two years. I don't look for him to have a long-term deal. Definitely a rental center with high upside there. Um, then Rodney Hudson, 34-year-old, another guy that's a little bit older, has a long career with the NFL. Another guy that's looking to probably get a little payday right before the end, $10, uh, $10 million a year, something like that. Again, not my favorite option. The two guys that I would be leaning a little bit more towards are Connor McGovern, uh, Connor McGovern, He's the New York Jets uh, center this past year. Their offense did not look great, but they certainly did run blocking incredibly well, uh, especially when Brees Hall was uh, was healthy for them. And he was one of the reasons why. So I think that he did a pretty solid job overall. He is going to be one of the higher touted prospects for center in the offseason this year in terms of free agents. So he's going to be one of these guys that may cost us closer to – uh, you know, 12 to $14 million a year. Part of that is because of his age. He is somebody that's only 30 years old, which, again, you're starting to get up there in years. But it's kind of the prime of your career for an NFL offensive lineman. So somebody that I think we could potentially get – uh, for you know, four to five years to come and have him finish his career as a Falcon. Best case scenario, we get him for about four years and he finishes with us for more or five. Worst case scenario, two to three years on a fairly lucrative deal for him. Uh, and then, you know, we still are trying to develop our center of the future. The only other guy that I think might give him a run for his money is Garrett Bradbury of the Minnesota Vikings, who is only going to be 28 years old at the start of the 2023 season. Um, had a phenomenal year with him. It's taken him a little while to get going, but definitely I think he only allowed two sacks this entire last season and was only penalized a handful of times. So it looked really good. He was part of a pretty dynamic Minnesota Vikings offense. Their defense was god-awful, and they were a pretty suspect team overall. But their offense certainly proved themselves this past year as a, as a top-tier offensive uh, unit for the NFL even if their defense let them down many a time. And say what you will, I know they had some blowouts this year where the offense didn't show up, but again, the offensive line more or less looked pretty good for the, uh, for the uh, majority of the season. And you've got Garrett Bradbury being the general of the offensive line there. So that's kind of my guard and center talk. Let's move on to the ones that everybody is really excited for. I will briefly touch on running backs. I personally think we do need to continue to build depth at the running back position. I think it's going to be Tyler Algier, number one, Caleb Huntley, number two. I want to see Corderell go back out to wideout. That would help solve a lot of our woes because one of the, I'm going to talk about wideout is one of the positions that we certainly need to fill probably through free agency and the middle late rounds of the draft. I certainly do not want to be taking a wide receiver in the first two to three rounds unless it's just incredible value. And again, first round, there's not going to be incredible value on a wide receiver. We need to be looking at defense, 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 or potentially a game-changing left tackle. That's the only things that I can see us going for. But again, our pick needs to build the trenches or really get a premium uh, secondary unit for us, somebody to, to complement A.J. Terrell. Um, but the only two running backs that I think are worthwhile, and I'm trying to think of complementary pieces here. So we've pretty much got a bunch of bruisers up front, particularly Tyler Jr. He is a bruising running back. So somebody that maybe could step in as a pass-catching back or bring something a little bit different to the table. The two guys that, for me, come to mind are Kareem Hunt and Devin Singletary. I think both of them are very solid overall. They have good hands. Um, even though Singletary often wasn't used in the past game, he still had you know three or four receptions per game for the most part of the season. Kareem Hunt has been known as a pass-catching back since the, his early days in the NFL. I'm not a fan of his character personally, just given his history. But again, if we're looking purely at talent, Kareem Hunt still has a lot left in the tank and could be a solid addition to us at running back. But again, I think we personally need to build in the uh, in the draft at running back. Younger is better. Uh, so these are both guys that are over the age of 25. And I think, again, I'm not knocking on that. That's still very young compared to me, especially. But I do think that we need to be considering um, 
going for a little bit younger position there. The meat of this discussion is going to be about wide receiver. There's about six that I wanted to talk about here, and I still think we probably need to draft somebody third round on. And again, it just depends on the value, depends on what we're looking at. But we do need to give Drake London, and we do need to give Kyle Pitts some help. Kyle Pitts is really not much of a tight end. He's much more of a you know massive wide receiving target who I think will make a big step forward with Desmond Ritter next year. Um, but the guys that I think are worthwhile to consider, one of them I don't think we're even going to have a shot at because the New England Patriots are one of the better cap situation teams. That's Jacoby Myers. He has been a really good uh, dink and dunk guy for them. He's been their number one receiver the last few years. I think they're going to look to keep him so that he continues his chemistry with either Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi, whoever they end up rolling with next year. So he's a guy that I do think gets re-signed, but right now he's listed as a free agent. He would be one of my higher profile targets to get our wide receiver to there. But again, I think he's going to get re-signed by the Patriots. Alan Lazard, another guy who would could be a solid number two. Obviously not the best number one receiver, even playing with Aaron, uh, Aaron Rodgers. But he still has a lot of talent, particularly as a blocking wide receiver. And if we're going to run the ball a ton, then that's something we certainly need to consider. And he would be a good fit as a number two wide receiver for that reason. And again, in my ideal world, I want Cordell Patterson back lining up at wide out. So we may even be talking about our wide receiver three at this point if that were to happen. Another guy, Juju Smith-Schuster. I'm not sure the Kansas City Chiefs are going to re-sign him. They certainly need to retain some wide receiving talent for uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes to throw to. But obviously, they run through Travis Kelsey. That's who their offense runs through, and everybody else is just a complimentary piece. So I think they could let Juju go and not re-sign him because I think he would be most of their budget for this year unless they just kind of put more of the money on the back burner for that contract. He is still relatively young. I don't think I realize this. He's only 26 years old, but I feel like he's been in the league a freaking fracking long time. But he's a guy who's just entering into what should be the prime of his career. Again, guy whose antics off the field I think are kind of stupid, but more power to him if he's a great NFL wide receiver. He was less bad about his TikToks and about his social media this year than he was the year prior. I do think that he is a guy that could bring a lot of value if we were able to resign or able to sign him. And I give him a plus or minus on the on the re-signing with uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. Another guy from the Kansas City Chiefs I do think walks and I do think has a high upside and was not utilized well in Kansas City. Me, Cole, Hardman, give me my Georgia guy. He was a second-round talent taken a few years ago. Not used properly at all in Kansas City. Uh, and, he, and again, he sat behind Tyree Kill, uh, Travis Kelsey, and just was the third or fourth option in a potent offense already. Move him into the second or third option, and he might be ex- he might be one of the most explosive players out there. So definitely somebody that I think we should be looking at. He's also going to be a little bit cheaper. He's only going to be 25 years old. So I think he's worthwhile to look at for a youth, for the fact that most receivers hit their prime around 25 to 27 years old. So he could be a guy that bounces back really well with us. Um, Sterling Shepard is a guy that I think will end up getting re-signed by New York Giants as they have one of the better cap situations as well. But again, a guy that I think could be looking for a new home after having some really uh, rough seasons and some injury issues going on these this past year or so, past couple of years. Um, a guy that I'm a little worried about because of that injury history, but overall not a bad player. And finally, Olamide Zacchaeus. We are in a position where we certainly can re-sign Olamide if we wanted to. I don't really think we need to. And it's not that he's been a bad player for us. He certainly had a connection with Marcus Mariota this year and was one of the better receivers there. But as soon as Desmond Ritter came to the forefront, the script flipped. Drake London, who didn't have any chemistry with Marcus Mariota whatsoever, ended up having amazing chemistry with Desmond Ritter, and that looks like a future match made in heaven. I really wish we had Kyle Pitts around so that we knew how their chemistry was. And then you had Olamide Zacchaeus, who was doing really well, and then all of a sudden lost his chemistry with Desmond Ritter. So not a guy, because of the chemistry issue, not a guy that I really look for us to re-sign, though he has been a dutiful Falcon for the last few years. And again, I do think we need to build in the draft for this position as well, certainly, so that we get some guys who are on the cheap. Um, and again, I don't know what moves we're going to make as an organization. 
uh, in terms of big spending. But this is the year. We are the second best cap situation. We're going to have $56 million without cutting anybody. I am personally of the opinion that we need to cut Mariota to get 12 more million. And I think we also need to probably cut Casey Hayward to save an additional five. Between that, that's 12 and five, that's $17 million that could go to pay a premium talent either on the offensive line or on the defensive secondary or defensive line or edge rusher. That is a solid amount of cash that could be used on one premium player as opposed to spending on a guy that's not going to be our backup quarterback anyway and a guy that just, quite frankly, is a little bit older. Uh, but that's just what I think, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing. We're heading into the offseason. It's going to be a little bit more scarce on videos, but thanks for watching. And as always, rise up.